大家好，然后我现在来给大家介绍一下今天讲座的老师，他呃名字叫做 Alfred Ocean， 然后是毕业于英国伦敦国王学院，呃，他曾经在捷克、韩国以及很多国家，特别多的国家有过教学经历，然后发表过很多论文，在国际杂志上都获过奖，然后今天他给咱们。他们讲的就是在美国氛围当中，就是为什么会有超级英雄，还有超级坏蛋。所以现在大家用热烈的掌声欢迎。嗯、谢谢。啊<笑>、oh, ，I'm really impressed. Well, I guess I'm going to repeat what the announcer just said. I'm going to discuss curious topic. I believe it's quite curious, and it's this topic here: superheroes and supervillains. Why an American phenomenon? And it's very interesting if you think about it. Of all the nations on the earth, of all the countries on the earth, it's only the Americans that realistically have pioneered and produced. Um, superheroes, supervillains. Um, we've all seen the films. We've all read the comics or comic books, as the Americans call them. So why then? There's no such thing as a Captain Britain. There's no uh, I don't know, Batman of London. These things are all to do with the Americans. So why? That's the question. And hopefully, not hopefully, most definitely. That question will be answered here today. In 1776, you have the American Revolutionary War. That's a famous painting. Um, to, oh, do you know who that is, by the way, standing? That's George Washington crossing the Delaware. It's one of the most famous crossings in the world. And they have a war against Britain for their independence. And it's a vicious, Bloody, brutal war, and Britain lose a lot like they do in the uh, football World Cup. A curious thing happens when they lose is what do they do? They now have this country, which they call America, and what do you do with this new country that you have? How do you run it? How do you govern it? What laws do you give it? Well, you could do what other countries do and borrow a few laws and customs from other nations, but the Americans want to found their country. Their country is founded on ideas and ideals. Okay? They want to find on the, the great things of history and knowledge and wise people. So that's what they do. They make it a country of ideas. It's not a country of a random, uh, random circumstances. If you look at the history of my country, Britain, it's very random. Immigrations, invasions, the Romans come and they go. A king has a baby that he doesn't like and he murders him and then... It's, it's all random, all random. The Americans decide, oh, we're not going to have that. We'll have a country of strict, not so much strict, sensible, wise ideas. And this is nowhere find this really um, ex, uh, ex, sort of visually explained on their Supreme Court building. Now this was built some time ago, a few hundred years ago, and these, these people here, there's more of them, these are all the great philosophers, Greek philosophers, Roman philosophers, Roman kings, all people who contributed to the concept of law and justice in our society. Now, some of you, if you're looking closely, do you know who this one is? <laughs> what you should do is a Chinese man. It's Confucius. <laughs> <laughs> so they are open to the ideas of many people. So they even look Confucius right there. And this is not modern, so I'll take the questions later. It's not modern because Wisdom, ideas, laws, good justice, and good governance. So you have to remember, this is what they base their country on. 
but they do something very, very unique. And they have a constitution based on these ideals, and then they do, I'll come on to the very unique thing, mythology. They dispense, they do not want the mythology of the old world. I don't know if you know any of these people, that's Hercules there as a boy. <laughs> Someone tried to kill him with a snake, and you can see he uh, done that. This is uh, Achilles, this is Maurice. These, they dispense with these structures. And it's interesting, it's, it's quite important that these, this, these mythological characters represent in many ways the reason why I've chosen some of these, some of these black ones is because it's always good to know that the old world, the old European world, um, has been very long, early on, an international world. But they dispense with these because they are the symbols of old values. These Eastern mythologies represent old values, old value systems. For example, if we take this man here, Moore, you know, he's one of the, the knights of the round table. And in that Camelot, uh, Camelot, yes. it's a hierarchy, isn't it? You've got a king, and you've got these elite soldiers. That's not the American way. They want to dispense with that. They want to dispense with these uh, ideals. So they take the wisdom of the world, but they take, they don't want the theology. That's something we've really got to bear in common. So, America begins to develop. And this is, comes from the title of the song, Bright Lights, Big City. Have you heard the song? No. Do you want me to sing it? Yes. yes. You don't have it. <laughs> bright Lights, Big City. I don't know. But there, there we have it. It's bright Lights, Big City. And America begins to develop into a great country. And as you can see, it's, it's almost like a mega city. These, these are the early pictures of, of America. That's actually, do you know where that is? Most of the most famous creatures in the world? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? That's not the old myth, this is the Brooklyn Bridge. <coughs> and um, you can see there the skyline. Now, not many cities have this at this time, have these massive, big uh, skyscrapers. And remember, since America is starting from scratch, there's no old building. Okay, so in London, if you ever come to London, you'll find some old buildings and some new buildings. They don't have any of that. They have all these modern buildings, okay? So everything's new, and it's modern, and everyone's building, and it's, it's, it's an exciting place. And if you look at these pictures, these pictures astonish visitors. If you look at them, look at the cars. Look at that, look, look at those, those beautiful cars there. And look at the, the streets and the trams. And they've got electronic cars and people that drive. For you, a car is nothing. But for many people living in the early 20th century, to see as many people driving cars and going on trams was actually, was actually quite amazing. It was actually quite amazing because this was America, it was a new place. And as you can see, once again, look at that. An old picture of all these people um, going about their daily business. And these cities were dense in population. And we'll come to their population in a minute. And there it is, the New York skyline. <coughs> One thing America had, long, pretty much long before anyone else, was consumerism. They liked luxury goods. You may not need them, but they want them. And as you can see there, cigarettes smoking, they advertise. You see, you see that woman there, Auto Comfort. That's a car, look at that, 1911. 1911, they're using women to advertise cars. And here we have here the Cotton Club. Who's ever heard of jazz? You know, heard of music jazz? They have these, this music, and they have neon lights. And again, these cities are incredible. They're new, they're exciting, they're everything. And uh, I think you can always tell, I know, it's so true, and you can always tell a nation, uh, it's like nice to the nation, and that means a spirit. 
serious at the end, how women dance. And this is, you look at these uh, women of the early uh, 20th century in America. They dress well, they dress often, they're free, they like life. Um, it's, it's, it's the good life, it's the sweet life they do, that, that they have. So it's a very, there's lots of, as it were, lots of work there because they're building, there's lots of advertising. It's more really more advanced than most cities at the time. And that's what they call it, the American dream. When people come, that's what they see, the American dream. And the American dream is, I do like that. Um, no? It's better. I do like that. Um, and it's, it's this idea, which is not, doesn't happen in my um, country, certainly in my country at the time, and not in many countries, that any, whoever you are, whatever you are, you can achieve wealth. Okay, you don't have to be born into money if you work hard. And you hard work, you can be have that money. And that's what it is, the American dream. And, and that's something that is central to their ideology. So what happens? If you people are hearing about all this wealth, what are they going to do? They're going to come. Lots of people are going to come. And that's indeed what America, what happens to the United States. Loads of people come. You may be like this. These are Italian immigrants. They're learning English. So Italian people come. Now remember, at this time, parts of Italy is not a rich country. They're not very old. These people here, these are Irish washerwomen. It's not a rich country at this time. These are again Italian immigrants, and they're all coming in from Europe. And here's, it, here's the breaking down. Germany's the most. But you can see, just about everybody in the whole world is coming to America. Because they want the American dream. They want that lifestyle. They see it in the magazines, people here, here in here in tales. But do you think they get it, all of them? Yeah, a lot of them go into the get, but they come off the ships. A lot of them, a lot of them do get a little bit, to be fair. But uh, a lot of them are in the slums of the big cities, so there's a lot of competition, a lot of racial competition between Italians, and Irish, and Spanish, and British, and Italian, a lot of internal competition. And then you have these people, not very nice people at all. And these were the extreme, I don't know, they were the people that's clan, they never heard of them. And they hated everyone, they hated everyone's all of them. Okay? And they would they they killed people without impunity, especially black people. They killed them with impunity. And they were a very powerful group. Um, although these people are extreme, they represent how many people feel about immigrants at the time coming to the country. In fact, there was a quote in a newspaper which said, I think it said something like, when I hear the word Irish, when I hear the word Czech and German, I get my gun. Because people didn't like these immigrants. They really, really didn't like them. So, you have these big cities, you have wealthy people, and you have immigrants. And this is creating something. And these immigrants, of course, are bringing in their culture. They have to remember they're bringing in their cultural values. They're bringing their values. And of course, you have these people. You know, they go around in hoods, they kill people, they murder people. It's it's quite <coughs> strange. You've got to separate. And then, crime. Big cities are big crime. Now, in the 1930s, they have. Well, do you know what happened in the 1930s? Yeah, the economy crashed. And many people felt, well, look, there's lots of crime because people are drinking too much, too much of the whiskey, too much of the white Well, not white the whiskey. <laughs> uh, so they said, let's, let's ban it. If we stop people drinking, then there won't be any crime. And that's what they did. So they banned drinking. It must have been a very bad place to be. But they banned drinking. And what do you think happened when they banned drinking? 
can't have a dream. What's going to happen? Anyone? Well, these people came along. The gangsters, the robbers, and they began supplying people with drinks, and they began to be crime-filled cities. Okay? So we adding, just add up, they began to be crime-filled cities, and even women were, were famous uh, bank robbers. He is probably one of the most famous American criminals of all, Al Capone, the gangster Al Capone, and uh, the government had to send a special group of people to try and get him. And they eventually did. But uh, there were others uh, in the great city of New York, Chicago, and what happened. But these villains were becoming very famous. And when you went to the cinema or the theatre, they would show you what we you know, what the government is doing to get rid of the, the criminals. But still the criminals began to be really famous. And you get things like this being published, because people like the criminals. For some reason they liked people like um, uh, Al Capone and what have you. So if we just stop and we think of what America is like in the early 20th century, for its promise beginning. We have a country founded on not myths or legends, they don't have a ruler or anything like that. They have ideas. They've dispensed with the mythology. They don't want any of the old European mythology. And they're building these big mega cities. Now these big cities are very wealthy, but they're also very poor. And many people are coming in, and there's lots of crime. Okay, it's super amount of crime. So, the birth of the superhero and the supervillain comes about. And one of the early ones is this, the Green Hornet. You see, they mask themselves and they go about catching the criminals. Okay? Have you ever heard of the Green Hornet? Yes? Do you know who this man is? No? There he is. Wonder Woman, you don't ever heard of her. But she's a, again a woman 
fight and fight crime, and uh, they're all in the service of, of good. But remember, I told you there are many people who come to America, many different nations, many different nationalities. And if you look at them, once again, extraordinary people are needed. And if you look at the X Men, and if you look at other things, especially this one, this storm, you start to have different colours. Yes, because America is not a country of a, a race, it's an idea, a country of ideas. So you have different, uh, different races represented. You have uh, different um, people here with the X Men. Once again, there you have Spider Man. I don't know if you know him, but remember the value of America? Anyone can become nothing. This man here, do you know him? What special powers does he have? None. Because of his thinking, because he wants to be more, he, it becomes like he has special powers. He makes all these electronics. And here we have Spider Man, again. He's just a high school student, he's just like you. And he gets uh, bitten by a spider. But, uh, and then he starts to make things. So it's all about the American sense that you can be one thing, but you can be another. That one there, I don't know if you know this one, I used to read these comics by The Punisher. He was called The Punisher, and he would uh, basically get guns and go around punishing bad people. So, it's all about Americans doing things for themselves, taking, as it were, responsibility and taking on the crooks because they are in the, 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 the crooks that they have. The, the bad people are super, so therefore they have to be super too. And then, I think of him, Nick Furious, once again, doesn't have realistically a great um, superpower, but it's again this kind of idea of advancement, this idea of including the whole uh, color of America in, 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 uh, in, the, in its mythology, you see. And if you notice, the mythology here in the comic books is exactly like the American value system. It's about based on ideas and it's based on people being able to come into a place and become part of it. So, in answer to our question, which I hope we do have, I have an answer to, is why um, uh, American comics are, why are American comics, why are comics, really, the superheroes and supervillains are American phenomenon, is because they, they had the reality of it. Their cities were super, their villains were super, Everything about America at a very early stage became super. And because they rejected the old myths, such as Camel, such as Troy, they didn't really want to base their mythology on that. They had to invent new ones. And those new ones indeed became the superheroes. So, I thank you for your attendance. I thank you for your attention. And I uh, ask if you've got any questions. I just wanted to say, did you have you noticed if you've watched Gotham City? This is an actual picture of New York, and that's Gotham City. So it's very similar. Their mythology and their places are very similar. So, do we have any questions? Or are we all going to be good Chinese students and have no questions? <laughs> Silence is the Chinese. Uh, well, if you have any questions, that's okay, it's not a formal lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found that, found that interesting. And I certainly have enjoyed it. So, without any other questions, do you, if you don't have any questions about the lecture at all, going... Yes, I have a awesome See? question. Can you talk about one of your favourite heroes? My favorite superhero? Yes. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. But you know what? I'm a Spider-Man man. I like Spider-Man. I, I love Spider-Man. Um, I used to read his comics, actually. Uh, I had a lot of his comics as a child. Yeah, Spider-Man was one of my favorite superheroes. 
and I'm old enough to remember to see the first film. That makes me very well. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't all about Spider-Man. It wasn't any good, but um, you can download it. It's not as good as the new ones. But I, always, I did like Spider-Man. He was, that's my favorite. Um, yeah, Spider-Man. I was not a fan of Superman. Too powerful. I never liked the ones that were too powerful. I was like the ones that were little weeks. Brilliant. And he is too strong. Um, yeah, but he can still do this. But I did like the music for Superman, the original music. That's why I was still out there. Any other questions? Oh, please. Just after you're saying about the uh, superheroes and their relationship. The relationship was inter That's a very good question. Their, their relationship is intertwined. They're like, um, they exist for each other. Without superheroes, you don't have superheroes. You don't have superheroes. They exist for, for each other. And on, on a higher level, as it were, they exist to tell us, I suppose, that there are people in society who want to do bad things to all of us. And they exist equally, superheroes, to tell us that there are those in society to protect us, in certain American society, sorry, to protect us from the good things. Um, there are part of the relationship is very, very much in, intertwined. Uh, it's really interesting. They exist for each other. It's like they're married, of course. But they, Argument, Please. Do you think the image will affect the matter? That's an interesting question. Does the I, I don't think it will. Personally, I think America has a very unique um, history. This history is so unique that, I mean, how do you imitate? I mean, Spider Man, you know, he swings. Across Manhattan, New York, or Manhattan, I don't think that that image. Remember, America is a place of American dreams. It's a place of dreams. It's a place of where anything can be done. I don't think any other city has that same image. Yeah, but the uh, output of the movies also have great power to it. Sorry. Uh, I mean, the output of the movies yeah. also have great power. It's, that's true, but I think. Someone would prefer, I don't know, but I think American heroes in the American cities look better than they do in the British cities. I don't know, do we really want to see Spider-Man swinging from the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> no. Or the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa? No. I don't think so. I don't understand that. Let him, let him stay. They're in America, American heroes. But I guess in films they may want to add different locations. But I think when they're in America, it's, it's, it's just right. I think. You, I mean, is, is there anyone against me? Does anyone want to see superheroes anywhere else? I don't know. Just, uh, you know, there's a long history about the superheroes and super villains. So, is there a difference between heroes or villains in the past and now? Is there a difference? Oh, that's great. Is there a difference between heroes or villains in the past? Well, if I come back, if I go back, no, if I go back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I can do this in. If I go back to the book, and then I'll come back to the book. Ah, there we go. If I go back to these people, okay, these are mythological people in the past, they tend to be bad or good just because they are in the service of, of the king, or not in the service of the king. They're, they're, you know, their, their badness and goodness it doesn't, is not a, a virtue. It's not about morals, it's within the service of the king. I mean, for example, this man here, Hercules. Hercules does things that we consider very, very bad. But he's considered good because he's doing it in the service of fate, in the service of greatness. So, whereas the American, um, in the American mythology of superheroes, they do things in the service of good to protect the innocent, to protect people, and to make sure there's, there's, there's justice. So I think that, that's, that's, that's probably a, a great difference. Yes. So you mean these people, these people who serve or do the virtue, yes. instead of a certain person? Yes, this, this has, they're good really because they serve people. They do good things, but 
their goodness is that they have served the king and they will never go against the king or they will never go against the So maybe the king is wrong or... Yeah, but they, you know, they, they will do anything. <laughs> Share